so this talk will be about um, molecular data normalization and metadata. So this is a project that um, I personally was not involved with. This is mostly um, Natalia and Mark Danielson and Haiyan Zhang from Pfizer. Um, but I obviously, I know about it. And um, so I'll try to answer as many questions as I can, but just, <laughs> just know. Um, so in 2015, so Pfizer and Clarivate, Clarivate, <laughs> Clarivate Analytics, um, we worked together to merge um, three internal clinical studies, a uh, collaborative study and one public, into this one um, big study within Transmart. And the goal was to do uh, cross-trial analyses. Um, within the, the versions of Transmart that we have, we're not able to do cross-trial analysis. So the way that we thought to do it was, oh, well, if we put all these studies into one big one, um, then maybe that's the best way to go. Um, so each study uh, included two to 500 clinical variables, um, just to give you an idea of just how big this effort was. Um, and through the effort, we, you know, both teams realized that it's pretty important to standardize um, the way that, that terminology, the ontology tree, and just data in general um, were put into Transmart, just as everyone else has mentioned. So um, each data type, um, you know, is unique and needs to be handled that way. And subject matter ex experts at Pfizer were kind of brought in and um, assigned to each data type to leverage their experience for a given area. And at the same time, you know, we all had to work together to put those pieces together so those were all harmonized. So this is one example. So this is um, the mRNA qPCR data. Um, and just to give you an example, um, so we have uh, tilde. And you can see from the left-hand side, this is kind of how it was organized before. Um, you notice that there's adjusted, and there's adjusted negative, and there's you know delta CT and CT, and there's batches, and there's replicates. And, um, and if you guys have played with Transmart enough, you know that opening a bunch of folders is not the fun thing to do. So. <laughs> um, what we've, you know, what we've done is adjusted it. So on the right-hand side, you now see a lot more um, uh, just information uh, where, you know, if you see batch and you see a couple of other items that are the same names, it's pretty confusing when you start to open up enough nodes. So as we clean it up, so um, I have some statistics here. So certain levels below a level of quantitation were treated as null. Um, probes with null values of more than 50% of samples were removed entirely from the final data set. And here is just, uh, we started to map the molecular assays to the Transmart data types. So you notice that protein data has um, target-specific protein detection and quantification. Um, meta uh, metabolomics has um, measurements of low molecular weight, uh, mixed or type-specific metabolomics. Uh, gene expression RNA-seq has measurements of gene expression by DNA microarrays, next-gen-seq, TACMAN. And this is um, just a general example of what our um, molecular data looks like. Um, I was looking at the previous speakers, and so I, I'd love to just uh, get a better look at how you guys, it looked like you had biomarker information and then you had gene expression. I don't know if you, um, right now what we have is we have all of that information kind of looped into just biomarker data. Just, uh, I'm looking at you, yeah, you have the pink. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So here we have biomarker data, we have the type of data, subtype, um, platform name, visit, and sample origin. And so um, the pre-processing rules, so each sample must have a unique ID that has to be mapped to a subject. Um, samples from different tissues or anatomical locations or same tissue, um, different pathological status or different time point must be annotated accordingly. Uh, technical replicates and batches should be normalized and summarized um, or filtered prior to data submission for Transmart loading. So we do have um, an internal Transmart data loading guideline, um, and they also include rules to, uh, for clinical data loading. And they were provided um, to Pfizer study owners and external curators. So molecular data, metadata forms, um, they're intended to help data providers and data curators with the loading of various data types. Um, it's just meant to be uh, a supplement. And so this uh, form is completed by the study requester and given to uh, the Transmart team, um, myself, Jay, uh, Hyann, uh, Hugo. 
And so the data curator uses the forms to format, and then they're uploaded and stored within the actual Transmart study folder for future reference. I have a list here of metadata fields uh, used by curators and then for reference. So you can see for reference, you have data owner, supplier catalog number, normalization algorithm, specimen collection date, assay date, assay operator, um, Pfizer biobook reference number, batch identifier, sample collection procedure. So we have data type forms. Um, so this is what I was talking about with the, the SMEs. So Pfizer can share these forms with the, the Transmark community and um, probably through the wiki for best practices. Um, and obviously I'd love to continue that discussion with other people of how they, what they see is important and not important. And I have some acknowledgments. So definitely Natalia and Mark were the top two people. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, we got a bunch. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of different types of users. Um, so we have, you know, just the standard biological scientist. We have comp sci um, you know, computer scientists. We have statisticians. Um, and that's, you know, in my first talk, I kind of talk about GWAS. But a lot of the um, requests that we have, I mean, we're, they're coming from all different angles. And so it's, you know, as I mentioned before, that we kind of rank them and we have to prioritize. So um, to answer your question, there's a lot of different types of people. And it's also, you know, we've noticed that when you have um, a standard ontology, um, it is actually, you know, it's stupid to say, but it's like really easy to look for stuff now. Um, people think, oh, I don't, you know, it, it looks clean enough. But even if, uh, like, the title of a study, um, when you're searching for it, even for um, in the search in the top left-hand corner, I don't know why, but it just it comes through a lot better than when things weren't clean. Go figure. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're kind of inadvertently teaching people about your organization's ontology because they see it. They can remember that piece of information. It's really important to complete because they'll pick up on that when they don't even realize it. They'll look at more than just the title and find it in there. Yeah, and, and we've noticed that, you know, and if you saw in the previous, you have general folders like batch and um, if you have very general names um, that are actually similar across other studies um, that aren't specific enough um, and you open the nodes in, in a search, for example, and you have like a bajillion things coming up in your search, you have no idea where the study is anymore because there's so many nodes opening up. It's, it's <laughs> I have a lot of experience uh, crashing the server because I've searched for like three letter words and they all pop up and um, definitely the standardization has helped immensely in cleaning things up, returning things properly. How many studies do you have in Transmart at Pfizer? Yeah, so clinical studies we have I think 72. And then GWAS studies as I mentioned we have, oh god, I think I just had this, <laughs> didn't have this, this talk two minutes ago. Um, was it 300 studies and 2,800 analyses? Thanks. Um, well, thank you for, for the presentation. Um, so what is the, um, your experience with the metadata that you collect uh, for the high-dimensional data studies? I mean, are those normally ready available, or do you have to really contact the study owners? again to ask them for those information. I mean, how, how easy it is to get, you know, that minimum information uh, that come, should come with the, the, each individual data set. Yeah, so um, I, again, I wasn't a part of this effort like Natalia and, and um, Mark were, but I, I can speak on one study that is currently being loaded. Um, as far as getting information about the metadata, um, there are just multiple rounds of communication between the study owner. Um, sometimes it takes a couple times to get, you know, what you need. Um, I don't think it's as easy, um, at least from my experience so far, with, with getting every information at one, at one point. Um, what I am trying to work on right now with Mark, um, and I was 
going to mention to you, Natalia, later. Um, I was thinking of having some kind of welcome package, like, hey, you know, um, welcome to Transmart. Um, you know, these are all the things that you need in order to give to us to, so that we can better service you so there's not a bunch of back and forth. Um, I was thinking of some type of like checklist of the things that we need beforehand um, and just make it a lot more smoother. Oh, you can. Okay, good. <laughs> Saving the day. No, I just, uh, a perspective from um, a frustrated curator. So before we develop this data standards, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to get data and it was going in circles. So I'm curating the data, I'm looking at the data here, I don't have a platform, and then I'm emailing Mark. Mark is going after the study owner, <coughs> who was probably was not the one analyzing the data, so he's going to analyst, and they're trying to get, dig out the platform file for this file, for this particular study, and then give it to Mark, give it to me, so weeks go by, <coughs> we have study 90% curated, but we don't have a platform file, so it's not loaded. Now we just don't get a study until all the metadata is filled out and there are check, book, check marks there, so um, platform file, the name of the platform file, and it should come with this data set, like all of the other information that we will need to curate and load the data is in this metadata, and when we get the package, we can just create it and load it without going in circles and trying to chase the last bit of little information about, I don't know, genome assembly that we want to have there, but we just didn't have that metadata. Any other questions? All right, so thank you very much. Thank you.